Hey everyone, Pauline here. I thought I would pop in to say hello. And also, I have invited an artist to come chat with me. Uh, her name is Nadine Johnson. She's a Canadian as well. She's just an hour ahead of me. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to just have a little gab. You know, we had a talk. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, it seems like so long ago, but we had a chat. And um, anyway, we, let me just check to see if she's here. Yeah, great. This is, no need to listen to me. Let's just get her on here because we're going to have a gab about our art journey and what's changed. And hey, how are you, Nadine? I'm good. Hi, Pauline. It's good to see you. <laughs> Excellent. I'm just going to adjust my video a little bit. There we go. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for um, being so spontaneous. Uh, I just invited Nadine a little while ago to have a gab with me. And she's like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, you and I both, uh, I think, feel the same way about our art journey and what's happened in the last few years. So, uh, and anytime I can, I get a chance to actually talk to you in person is wonderful. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you're just an hour ahead of me, right? Yeah, I'm in Calgary, so uh, Mountain Standard Time. So yeah. Okay. So we're both suffering through the winter, almost ready for this to be over. But um, we have our art that's making us happy. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm so lucky, and I my studio is at home, so I don't uh, I haven't had to worry about you know restrictions or anything. I still have access to it, so that's been excellent. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I. Um, I've had a studio, well now I've got this this studio, which is like four times bigger than my last studio. And I've had it for about a year and a quarter. But it is so nice to work from home. I agree. It's, uh, I get up in the morning and if I, it depends. Sometimes I come straight down to my studio, but other days I end up at my desk. I'll do a little journaling or uh, I've, you know, change some of my habits. So that's yeah. good. I, I do, I track my habits now because there's some things that I'd like to accomplish every day. Uh, but yeah, journaling and uh, that sort of thing is pretty important uh, part of my everyday, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'll come down here and that's also been a new thing for me in the last few years. I'm pretty regular. Uh, yeah. I have a pretty steady studio practice routine uh, and uh, that didn't happen prior to a couple of years ago. I, I think I needed a little push uh, to become more committed to my a a art career, right? Yeah, and it's interesting because um, I'm the same. When I moved to the Okanagan, which is about 10 years ago, and everybody's saying hi, so I'm gonna say hi to you guys too, because it's so sweet and they're all waving and whatnot. <laughs> We're just gabbing away and we forgot yeah. to be here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, you know, when I moved here, I set up a studio and I was so scared to go in it. Like, I had so much fun setting it up because I love organizing things. I don't, not parties, just spaces. I love that yeah. and things. And I, once I got it all organized, I was afraid to go in. And, and I know why, because I was crap. And I, <laughs> like, I mean, I would do things and I wanted it all to turn out right away. And then if my husband walked by, I would be like, don't come in. <laughs> it's not finished or you know it's never gonna be finished and but I remember wanting to paint but being afraid and so you know we catch on to ourselves because I had spent weeks organizing and then it was ready and I wasn't in there and and then I started to sort of pull back a bit and ask myself like why are you not going in it was because I was afraid I was afraid I was going to make a mess, which I was, but I wasn't where I am now, which is it's okay to make a mess because I'm, my, my ideas are getting sorted through and I'm trying things out. You only learn by trying and then seeing what happens, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I can, I'm with you all the way. It's, it's this weird sort of, we're not really procrastinators. We're just, it is, it's a fear of making the first mark or going in and like you said, making a mess of something that's too precious. Um, 
you know, and so we just avoid it rather than just going in and doing something like some days, a lot of things that I do now, I just, well, it's like little and often is something that Nicholas talks about a lot. Nicholas Wilton, if anybody doesn't, yeah. isn't familiar with him. Yeah. And that is something that I take to heart. Uh, even if I have a half an hour, I come down and I have a setup in my studio where everything's kind of ready to go at any time. So if I only have a half an hour now, I don't feel that that's not enough time. Right. Uh, even if yep. I need, yeah, even if I just need to come in and, and really look at what I'm doing. Sometimes yep. that's all I need. Well, and you know, when you're organized, like that's one of the things that I, I've got these three huge trolleys with everything. I have five trolleys in, in, in the studio, but everything, I need to see things. Cause if I don't see them, I don't own them. They're not, they're not here. Right. I forget. Yeah. And so when you have things organized, especially if you're a visual and you need to see things, then you can easily just grab a sketchbook or grab a piece of paper or canvas or paint or what have you. I even have, um, and I'm sure you do too, and a lot of us do that have taken um, Nick Wilton's free course as well as CBP, but the wet palette, if you can have that handy, uh, even with some paint on it from a couple days ago, if you've got some things so that it doesn't, you know, go nasty, I think um, that's another conversation, but <laughs> you know, if you can, have, there's so much to talk about. Um, if you can have that handy, you can do like 10 minutes of painting because you came in here with fresh eyes. You went, oh, I know what I got to do. And then you're in and then you're out again. Absolutely. I agree. I, I actually use a, I don't use a stay wet, which is interesting. I have them, mm -hmm. but I use a big plastic palette and uh -huh. I leave. And if I, if I'm working on a, which I'm working on a series right now, but if I'm working like that, sometimes I'll just use a, a plastic wrap or something to cover it up. So yep. it stays, but um, I'm in here so much that I use the paint so quickly it, right. or I have it in tubs. Yeah. So I yeah. mix it in large quantities and then I have tubs with lids and I just snap all the lids off and I'm ready to go. Um, oh, and you don't, yeah. And if I don't even have time like to pick up a brush, sometimes I'll come in cause I have other tools like, I use Sibilla Woodies, which I love, and like water-soluble crayons I love. And I just got some from the Art to Life store. I just got some of those beeswax crayons, which are so beautiful. Yeah, so man. I will pick up something like that and I'll just walk around the room. And if I feel like making a mark, I do. Sometimes that's all it is. And then it's something that I can respond to when I come back in next time. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, too. Like, if you can get set up, you don't need to have a big studio, but you do need to be able to see, at least for me, anyway. And I have uh, I have what you have. And it's funny, because I don't always use the, the wet palette. It's usually on the go. But when I'm going with uh, larger t works, I've got these tubs. And some of my tubs are uh, about maybe 12 inches by... I don't know, maybe 12 inches by nine. But you know what it is? It's a spinach container because my husband and I eat copious amounts of spinach. That's what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's fantastic because it comes with lids. They're clear. It's not strong plastic. So you have to be careful. But you can get a nine inch brush in there. You can yeah. mix paint in there. I love it. And so I've got... Um, I've got about seven stacked where I can get different colors and they, because they're meant to stack, you yeah. can stack them up and come with a lid. And, um, but you know, just to be able to grab and go because the, the one thing about that um, little and often statement, which Nick uses um, is that you have to have something prepared. Otherwise you're going to use your little bit of time for preparation rather than creation. Right? Absolutely. Uh, that's so brilliant because I have a beautiful brush. I just brought that's like, I think it's 12 inches. So I need something to actually be able to dip it in. So I could use one of those lettuce or salad containers would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you, um, if it's, you know, if I want to be holding it, it's not that floppy, okay? But if if I had a lot of paint in it, like really, like a couple inches, you can just double them up because that thickens the plastic in the base, right? So you could hold it with your hand, dip in and, you know. That tip is worth the call. <laughs> so fantastic. <laughs> you know, I must have about like 
300 of them stacked in the cupboard. And I don't know why I don't get rid of the ones that already are covered with paint. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't like wasting, you know, so I've got like stacks and stacks and then, you know, smaller ones for arugula, which there's still, mm -hmm. you could get a four or five inch brush in there. And it's great because you can, if you don't use tons, like, like uh, a big, um, you know, like a yogurt container full of yeah. fluidy sort of paint, if you just needing a little, you can mix on one side and then use the other side and even make that watery and hold it on an angle. You know, like, I mean, they're just, they're I love great. That. Yeah. That's so smart. That's, that's brilliant. I, uh, yeah, I have some trips, uh, tips too, but not, that's the, that's the best I've heard. Like, I think this week. So oh, I, good. yeah, I have my, like for collage. So I use a lot of collage in my work and I, uh, I posted it. Yeah. I think yesterday, a little video of how I store them. So I got that tip from Mark Eanes, uh, in the tin foil containers because they're super light and they stack. And, uh, so they're easy to move around my studio and I color coordinate them. And so they lay all out. So if I'm doing, working on something, I can just kind of look down or look on the floor or on the table. And How it gives me an, they, Dean? You know, you can buy them in different sizes. The ones I'm looking at right now, I think are probably 18, 16 inches, maybe. I don't, I think they're bigger than 12. So maybe 14 to 16 inches by like, 11 so like i could use my spinach ones that i'm not using now for collage yeah. paper and i'll be able to see the colors because it's transparent absolutely that's another oh, like idea. yeah yeah and then they stack right so you can actually see what you have yeah and because it's always people are always wondering how to organize right i also have a tabletop i started with this uh, a tabletop sort of file folder that you know how you uh, for offices. Yeah. And I color coordinated that. And cause I make, uh, I'll use up leftover paint from my palette and I'll make papers and things like that. So I, I, I use that, but it wasn't big enough. And also then I had to kind of go through it, you know, and yeah. kind of figure out, I still use it. But yeah. when I'm in my studio, like if I'm going to work outside, I take the file folder cause it's got kind of everything in it. Sure. But in, in my studio, I use the trays cause they're fantastic. Yeah, I like the portability of your idea. I've got a shelf that I had designed for um, putting a, in a cupboard above the fridge where you can put all your cutting boards and your, you know, cookie sheets. Yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. I had that design and then I had another idea. So I used that and I flipped it over and I put my sheets in that way. More for a space thing because it was wired this way. Uh, yeah. But it's not easy because then you're digging around, <laughs> like forget it, I'll just use paint. You want to make sure that you can tap in to your juiciest freedom zone and you want to yeah. get all that organi organizational stuff out of the way, right? Yeah, I agree. It makes such a difference, right? Um, I also, another thing I have, I'm just looking at right now on my desk or on my, I have a table, like an island, sort of like what you have trolleys that are set up. So I have yep. one, one in my studio. And uh, I have these squeeze bottles that are like restaurant, what people use in restaurants for like sauce or mayonnaise or something. And I think they're called FIFO or FIFO oh, yeah. bottles. I love them. So I have, right now I only have six here, but um, I would have more. But those are sort of my primary colors that I kind of use, staple colors. And they're there. So I just squeeze it and go. So if I oh, want it. Great. I have those too. I think I saw, I got that tip from somebody from the Art to Life team as well, right? I think, yes, yeah, Susan. Yeah, and then you load them from the top, you get the, you get the paint in there, you squeeze it from the bottom, and then you don't have all of this, like the clogging nozzle is so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. You know, just shoot me, because you're in there with a toothpick and then that breaks. <laughs> I usually end up pulling the lid off and just squeezing the tub in, right? So these are, that's a really good tip. These are amazing. I have something I have to show you now. What oh, yeah. You? Oh, here, I got to show you this. Okay. This is great, isn't it? I had no idea what we we're going to talk about. Okay. See this? <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay. So this is also an art to life tip. This is a Susan Melrath tip. She, you can, so to fill those countertop bottles, 
uh, instead of pouring and using funnels and stuff, because it gets quite messy and also you end up wasting. Like if you're not, if you don't have a canvas or something ready to take that extra paint. Right. So this is from Amazon. I bought it. I'm sure you can get it other places. Uh, it's a two ounce, two fluid ounce, and it, it's brand new. So I haven't used it yet, but I do know that when you use it, it squeegees out all the paint from inside. So you don't have to worry. You may just have to rinse the tip out. Yeah. And there's no spilling or anything like that. That is. Good. I love that. Now, if you, could you put your hand beside it so I can see how big it is? Because I've got two in my shopping cart and on, and on Amazon, and I'm just trying to figure out which one I want. So this one is the one that I bought on Amazon actually shows a person's hand beside it so that you can see the sort of dimensions of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I think you wouldn't want something smaller than this. If you're no, I want the biggest one I can get. <laughs> yeah. And they might make these bigger. I don't know, but I, I picked the one that was as big as the hand to make sure I got the right size. Yeah. And you said it was two, how many ounces? It says two ounces or 60 CC. So yeah. It's, uh, but it's a great size. So I yeah, think it's so going to be fantastic. Syringe. Yeah, somebody was just saying, what is that? It's a syringe. So just be resourceful and Google in um, Amazon and lots of stuff will come up. It's a syringe. Just say, I didn't know what it was called either. I just Googled, uh, not Googled, but in, in the search, just called it giant syringe and they, you know, they all came up. So yeah, yeah. So it, that I'm super excited about trying um, because I have, I buy some, a lot of my paint I buy in the gallon. I buy my white by the five gallons. So uh, That's a great it, idea. Yeah, it's do you. I saw that you got some stuff from the States. Um, do you have a friend that ships for you or do you pay the shipping or how do you get your stuff? So I, I love golden, um, but it's, I'm having a hard time getting some of the paint that I want. Um, but I did, I started, I wanted to try Nova because I know a lot of artists that use it. And uh, so I bought some and you can buy. So here in Canada, if you're in Canada, for those of you who are Canadians watching, uh, you can order directly from Nova. You can phone them or you can do an order online. They will, if you do the online order, they're going to call you uh, just to confirm and talk to you before they do any shipping. Um, you will pay a duty and you will pay shipping, like a shipping fee, but it's minimal. The oh, good. Cost, yeah, the cost on the paint is very, very low. Okay. Uh, it comparatively speaking to what we they used to have Stevenson here in Stevenson's. I love it. Yeah. And, and it was affordable. Um, and I think that there's another chroma here in Canada, but I haven't yeah. tried it. So it's I can't, not, yeah. And not. I, I can't speak to that, but, uh, but the, I know so many people using Nova. I wanted to try it. Mm -hmm. So even for Canadians, it's, it's actually reasonable paint, the color, the pigments, fantastic. It's much, uh, it's a little bit looser bodied. Than, nice. a, than a heavy bodied um, golden product, yeah. uh, but it's nice. Like, cause I always, I do thin my paint a little yeah. bit, like I'll put a medium or something. So I don't mind that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's good. So it, it does, won't cost you a, a, a whole lot more, right? Oh, good to know because I did a little search and it seemed like it was gonna cost me like a couple hundred dollars for shipping or whatever. I thought, well, you know, forget it, <laughs> forget it. But yeah. okay. Good, good tip. So, um, yeah, so we just covered so much, but I want to also <laughs> make sure that we don't forget to talk about our art journeys because, of course, we know that the, you know, the free Art to Life workshops coming up and, we're, you know, we're not going to talk about that because if you're signed up with either um, Nadine or me, you can find our links. Probably yours is on your bio as is mine and on the website, right? Your um, Art to Life link, yeah. Oh, are you still there, Nadine? Uh, oh, she is, doesn't know it. <laughs> are you still there, Nadine? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, she's, I've, okay, are you back? I'm trying. Okay. Well, I'll just gab until you start interrupting me, okay? Um, Let's see. There we go. Um, well, what I was going to say was that the Art to Life uh, free workshop coming up that starts February 14th, um, 
that uh, you can get a free link on uh, my bio. And I'm sure Nadine has the same. She will be back, hopefully. I'm going to just check to see if she's got, um, if she's going to try to approach getting in here again. I can see that she's trying. You have to flip the camera around again, Nadine. Oh. Um, is the way eh? you just get into the juice of things and then there's some technical difficulty <laughs> <laughs> oh good she can hear me okay so we can see your studio corner but we can't see you so you have to flip the cor uh, camera around and nadine if you want or are you back if you want you can exit and then ask to come back in again okay so, yeah and i'm going to just keep gabbing here um because what I wanted to chat with you guys about and share um, as well, because Nadine has also done this. Here we go. Can you let me in? Okay. Um, I think you have to ask again, Nadine. Um, here we go. Go live with Nadine. Let's see how that works. <laughs> okay, there we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I appreciate your tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened, but someone did ask to see my container. So I'm going to grab a container. Yeah, you go grab you. that. Yes. So, um, yeah, because, you know, it's like this whole art journey. Nadine and I both have this amazing. Oh, okay. There's her. Um, this is the container for the collage, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so that's the container. And then this is a smaller version of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, making for, for broiling, um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a cook person, but um, roast. roast. Yeah, <laughs> roasting or lasagnas or anything. You can find it in a grocery store in, in the tin foil aisle where you get all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yes, back to our art journey. Or spinach. <laughs> yes. yeah, okay, yeah, because we were just talking about that. So anyway. Um, Nadine's got a link um, on her profile. I've got a link on mine. But what we really wanted to talk about was our art journey and how it's changed. Because uh, did you do um, the Art to Life in 2018 or 2019? I did CVP in 2019, but I found Art to Life in 2018. And it just totally changed my direction. How about you? I found Art to Life in 2019. Uh -huh. And I didn't do CVP or the Art to Life program until 2020. I was in a uh, participating in a mentorship masterclass type program that, um, and so I had a lot kind of going on. But the interesting thing was, as soon as I, and I actually hadn't done the workshop in 2019, but I found Nicholas and I found, and then I started following his blog and everything. And so when the workshop came out in 2020, I had already committed to not doing anything that okay. year. I was just going to paint. I wasn't going to do anything else. And I did the workshop and I was, um, and I've been painting. So now I'm about 14 years. Um, and I've taken, I've worked with some incredible art, uh, like artists, professional working artists in Canada. I've been so lucky. Um, but that free workshop was so simple and basic. And I was just kind of, and I never went to art school. So I don't know if that's what they teach in art school, but I'm telling you, it was just a really a game changer. And it was like those, the first three days I said, I just said to my husband, I have to do this. Yeah. Cause Nicholas offers the course after the free workshop, but I, knew it was going to be a game changer. And my husband, we had a big talk about it. And I said, I don't know there. It's just there. The few things that he shared during the few free workshop made such a difference already. I, it was just kind of like aha moments. Like, how could I not know this? Like I should know this stuff. I know. I know. It's the same. Like when I came across in 2019, I don't even I just saw it on Facebook or something and I'm such a curious person. I'm like, click, click, click. And I remember listening to his, um, you know, him talking and what he was sharing in the free workshop. And I just thought, I felt the same as you. I'm like, I've been to art school. I've been design, been to design school and I was still waking up from the free workshop. And um, I didn't know that he had a course that you 
you would have the opportunity to opt in on if you wanted. It wasn't, you know, you didn't have to. Yeah. Um, so I was really surprised and I wasn't ready for that. But, and I also had a full plate. Like I was committed to painting about 20 paintings to put in a winery in May. And then I also had signed up to do a show in September that I was going to do another 20 to 30 paintings for. Wow. I know. I just, wow. I, I've never shown my work before. So I was just like, yes to everything. And, um, but I, so when the opportunity came, I thought, I don't know if I can, I, you know, cause I, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. But what was really cool is that my work changed immediately. And it wasn't because do this, do this, do this. It was more like freedom. I felt free to explore. I had a new vision of creating, like not let's get a bunch of paintings for this show. It was more like, what do you want to explore, Pauline? And, and from what you've learned, like line, you know, like yeah. that simple, not, okay, let's get, you know, all of these paintings for this show and they're all going to have these colors. It was more like, ah, oh, why don't I play around with this and that? And it became an adventure that I shared at shows. And that was so much more fun to create art. That, and that was, you know, as much as we learned from that free workshop, what I got was a sense of freedom in addition to all that other stuff. I agree. I, it's, it was like, almost like I saw my work different for the very first time. Right. And I kind of, uh, or I allowed myself the opportunity to, pl to play and to risk a lot more in my work. Uh, things that maybe hadn't, ha I had thought of, but never thought that, or never even wanted to explore because I was af afraid maybe. Right. Um, yeah. Like it, it just, yeah, I think I really did see myself and my work and in a completely different way. It was, it was, I don't even know how to explain it because it's such a, it's just a week, right? The free workshop, but there's so much content. It's actually the most important parts of what it is that we do as artists, right? True. And, right. And it's just so simplified. So it's hard to explain because it's going to affect everyone differently. And yeah. it depends on every, all kind, you know, where you are in your art journey. Um, but I have done it twice now. So I did it again last year. Wow. Good for and, you. Yeah. And uh, I learned different things. So not only did I take away from the first time and I, and I started to explore and look and see my work differently and sort of ex maybe decide what it was that I really wanted to do in my art, yeah. not, not because other people liked it, but more because what I wanted from my art. Yeah. And yeah. And then last year I, it was almost like, I thought, well, do I need to do it again? And I, and cause you think you already know it, but you don't. Cause there's you're always one CVP, right? Cause you're talking and, about and yeah. the workshop. Oh, and right? the work. Oh yeah, yeah. I do it every year. It's a mind blowing experience. It's like, it, Oh my God. Yeah, because you think you know it, but you know what? Something always, there's always that one thing that you're, you're just like, oh, okay. And, and it usually, for me, applies to something I'm doing where I'm maybe just, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that one thing or I'm trying to achieve that one thing. And it's something that Nicholas says, and I'm just like, oh, that's it, right? Yeah. And I go and it just, it's kind of like, I see it again in a whole new way. It's... It's just, um, I think for anyone who, any artist, I think we can always learn. I think we never stop. I think the minute that we stop, we, we just, there's no joy left in our work. Yeah. We're always looking for something new. We're always exploring. We're always pr pushing the boundaries, risking, you know, ourselves in our work. We put ourselves, our whole selves in there. And, and I think that, and especially this year, because I think that they've done something new. I think oh, yeah. they've changed it a little bit, right? They've got it really. Um, well, I've noticed that the free workshop keeps on getting bigger and juicier. Yeah. And I've also heard that the CVP, which is for anyone who doesn't know, that's the Creative Visionary 
program that um, is offered to artists after the free workshop. And, you, you know, it's not a prerequisite either way, but it's yeah. an opportunity to take your um, art a level up. Uh, but they amped up both of those things. And I've noticed, like, I remember seeing the uh, free Arch Life workshop a couple of years ago and thinking, oh, my God, they're sharing that, too. Like, <laughs> I know. <great> stuff. <laughs> But then they're adding more into um, the Creative Visionary program, which, you know what, I, because I've done, um, and you guys, I um, did a YouTube thing, I think it was last week, but it's also here on Instagram where I showed progression of my works. So if anybody hasn't seen that, there's a video where I show how my work has changed. Um, but, but what I wanted to say is, like, when you do something, um, you're going to do it again next year you always improve because we're always all evolving whether you're a teacher and i found this with a course that i offered last year which um you can find that out on my website but as soon as i was done it was already like oh i want to add more because yeah. you want to share more it's not just like i didn't get it right it's i've just discovered this i want to share more and so yeah. you get that too right and this was the thing i was just um going to say about what you said that you got more when you did the art life workshop again or and even did you do cvp twice as well yeah so yeah. the thing about that too is we always want more because we're always evolving and you kind of are ready for the next thing that you're about to see and yeah. all the things that we do are like building blocks and you can you can go and you can read a book again particularly if there's learning content in there and you will get more because now you're at a different level and you see it a different way again and that helps bring out more out of yourself absolutely that 100 percent. that's because i yes i did the workshop in 2020 i did cvp the creative visionary program in 2020 and last year i did the workshop again and like I said, every time I do it, uh, and I, and it, you're right, I'm at a different place. I'm ready to absorb a little bit more um, and integrate it a little bit more into who I am as an artist, not just on paper, but also into my everyday world, right? The other things yeah. that I'm doing. Um, and I'm doing it again this year. So I'm doing the free workshop again. Yeah. And I'm doing the creative visionary program again. Oh, wow. Good for you. Now, someone just asked me, where can I find the free workshop? That is both on my profile and Nadine's. We both have links that you can sign in. So wherever you want to go to, you just go, go to either one of our profiles and it'll give you a link and you get, you just sign up right away. Or if you want more information, that's on my website too. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to do the uh, Creative Visionary Program again this year. I was like this, but I now have to move the course I offer from one platform to the next, and it has to happen right now before April's done. And it was like, there's only one of me. Yeah. <laughs> And absolutely and her, all my stuff is going to disappear so anyway it was like you're kidding me because i remember when i wanted to take cvp in 2019 i had too big of a uh, 2018 my plate was too full so yeah. i had to wait and that's when nick had to put it back a few months so i ended up waiting about 18 months which was brutal because i was already kicking myself after the first I don't know, month, even though I knew I had too much to do, you know, we get this FOMO thing. So you guys, if you're going to take the free workshop, take the free workshop, then you won't have FOMO about not taking the free workshop. Absolutely. Don't wait. I did the same thing in 2019. I didn't sign up for the creative visionary program and I had bad FOMO. So I don't do that. Anymore. I always take the free workshop regardless. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah the creative visionary program is a separate thing it's not yeah. you don't have to take that but the free workshop there's so much amazing information in there and no matter what level you're at that's the other thing you can just be an absolute beginner you can just be super interested in art and want to just don't know where to start this is like this is where you should be because he gives you the absolute basic information that you required to actually make art 
Yeah, yeah. And, and I think too, you know, like some of the things that I learned from doing the free workshop, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's actually crucial information for making art, but it's also not over your head. So when I did that free workshop, and it was quite a bit smaller when I, I still felt like the world had opened up for me because I was actually ready. I remember wanting my art to look different, but not knowing what to do. I was kind of caught with creating work that had a strong horizon line somewhere and I couldn't seem to figure out how to break out of that. And so I started playing around with shapes and lines, but what I learned in the free workshop started to, you know, like my, the small ideas that I had, they just expanded because all the work that went, uh, that I created that summer for those two shows, they just changed. Like they, it, it just, there was no horizon line anymore. Yeah. And they're like, let's go, let's fly. You know, let's play. Yeah. So um, information, uh, practical stuff. But I also, I just felt like my wings unfolded. I agree. I had, when I, the first free workshop I did, I had just finished uh, three commission painting abstract pieces. And I never painted abstract before. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so the person that... Ballsy. <laughs> I know. The person that commissioned me was fantastic, and she had great faith in me. And I was super... I did have one piece that she sort of... That's what we had gone off of. Um, but it was... I had finished that at the end of January, and then the free workshop was in February. And when I did the free workshop, I was... I, I wish I'd had it a month previous oh. or two months before that. So... Because the way that I instantly, it's not like painting from reference or it's not like painting a real life painting or florals. Like I was a floral painter. I am a floral painter, but I, for years and years, it's, it's a completely different way to think, uh, design, value, shapes, things. It's not the actual subject. You know, it's, it was like my, my brain exploded and I, and I was able to really look at the canvas in a completely different way than yeah. I ever was before. It, and that was just from the week, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know, um, I know that this free course as well as CVP is great for representational as well as abstract. So anybody who's not sure about that, I have to say it's totally, as a matter of fact, I know they bring in more and more content for representational, which is fantastic. But I know that this workshop for me helped me because um, I was having trouble with leaving representational thinking into abstraction. And, I, and I, I've got like so many abstract books and none of them work because like worked, I mean, like I'd flip through going, I don't want to do that exercise. I don't want to do an exercise. I just want to paint. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that I really liked about even CVP there was like an assignment, but you got to do your thing. You just learned what it was you needed to learn about concepts. And then you got to go do your thing. And I found that I started to feel like I could embrace abstraction because I was letting go of something that I not necessarily was comfortable with, but that maybe I grew up just thinking that was the way art was, was just like a picture of that. Yeah. And now it was needed to be more, but what is that more? And then I just find that abstraction and um, kind of learning um, the concepts that are given in art to life, but also just art making um, principles, if you will. You have something to play around with while you're working, you know, and or even brainstorm what's going on with my painting and that's not working. And that's what you get as well. I think it gives you a whole bunch of stuff about how to make your work better, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and for those of you that don't paint and you're kind of wondering, well, it's not really for me. If you do any form of art, it could be sculpture, it could be photography, it could be, uh, you could do fabric or textile art. Uh, these principles that they talk about in the, in the free workshop apply to everything. Yeah. And I try to remember that because sometimes I, 
this transition for me. So I've been in abstract now. I'm transitioning back into florals. I'm trying to bring the two together. Oh, wow. And it's, it's for, for me, it's a struggle. Like I, I get stuck in the subject matter rather than the actual principle, like, like the whole shape based rather than what it is. Like, yeah. so I know that, um, people will think like that. Right. But if any form of creative, uh, out like any creative outlet that you have, these principles apply to that. It, and, and they're simple. So that was, for me, that was, it's layman's terms. Like I said, I didn't go to art school. So the free workshop, I understood it. It was just like ding, 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 everything. It made such sense, right? And yeah. I could apply to apply it instantly to what I was doing. I didn't have to think about it or, or work at it. It was just there. I knew immediately how I would integrate it into my work or, or change my work, better my work, really, right? So, yeah. but yeah. Well, you know, I was just thinking, uh, you know, I know all of you, and I've got to check to see if you've got questions down there, but down there, but you know, it is such a beautiful journey to be creating art, but there are times where you're standing there looking at all this amazing stuff that you put on your canvas and then you don't know what to do. You get stuck. I know for me, I get stuck sometimes and I find that, you know, when I can use the principles or what I've learned, it allows me to extract myself out of the painting process and then go back in again with some clarity. And I've just got to see if I can get Nadine back because I think I lost her again. Hold on. Okay, here she is. There we go. <laughs> She's bent on leaving us. Um, let me just see. There you are. So I did promise that we would only do this for half an hour. Maybe the um, ether world is telling us to like. Sorry. I, sorry, everyone. I don't know what I'm like sitting here all of a sudden it's gone. I'm like, oh no. But at least that time I got back on a lot quicker. So that was you good. You did. Well, you see, practice. I know. I know. Yeah. You know what? Um, I missed that little bit that you were talking about. Uh, but oh, well, what, okay, what I said was that, um, you know, we all love being in the process of creating and it's a lot of fun, you know, playing with your materials, color, shape, line, and everything. so it's such a visceral, visceral experience, but you can get to a point, and I often do, where I've got so much on my canvas and I'm not sure next what to do. And that's where these nugget, no, you know, these nuggets that we get, from um, from from Nick is where I really learned them. Um, now I can step back and brainstorm. Okay, what's going on? What do I need to yeah. do? What can I try? What do I want to get rid of? What's happening here and that sort of thing? And because and and what you had said about um, oh shoot, you know it's just reminders. Yeah. You know. You get drawn into the zone, but you can go in so far into that tunnel that it's hard to know what's happening anymore. And so if you can step back and you've got something to refer to, ask yourself some questions, which, you know, when you've got in information, you have yes. to go consult, right? Because we do all, I mean, every artist will say, oh yeah, I get lost. Everyone, oh, <laughs> we all go through that. You get, you get stuck, right? You're kind of like, what is my next move? Um, and yeah, he gives you simple tools, uh, where you can sort of problem solve your way around, um, or to be, you know, take a chance, be fearless and, and, you know, what, make a move, but you, but you make that move with maybe a clearer understanding of how it's going to affect what's on the surface already. Right. Yeah. So I remember actually, um, back in 2015 or 16, I, this is before I ever knew that Nick breathed air. I um, <laughs> remember doing things in my studio, like making brave moves. I didn't know why, but I thought I pretty sure I was insane because I was painting maybe for three hours and getting nowhere. Yeah. And then getting so frustrated that I, and it wasn't a thought. It was almost like I was, pardon my French, pissed off with myself. Yeah. And I just grabbed the paintbrush, a wad of paint, and I would just make a big move over the painting. And then I would look at my, 
and go, oh my God, what have you done? But the interesting, about, interesting thing about that, as crazy as I thought it was, when I reached to get a rag to go wipe it off, when I looked back again, it was actually more exciting. Yeah, I agree. I do, and that is something that I learned from Nick, more like I'm not crazy. It's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. You want to do something drastic if you're not doing anything but, you know, going around in circles, right? Absolutely. I, I agree. I do that. I, a lot, actually. Um, I just did that on a big painting that I'm working on because I knew it wasn't there. It wasn't. And I was, I was doing that, trying to save pieces. And I know that stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I've done this. This is going to be my free, my third free workshop. Right. And I know that stuff. And you go around, you try to keep pieces because you like it. You like how it feels. And then I totally obliterated the whole thing. And my, I went up and I said to my husband, yeah, I kind of got rid of it all. He's like, what? Why did you do that? Right? Because it doesn't make sense. But to me, it does. Like, I did. Yeah. What do you think, though, Nadine? Like, as a, as a person who's creative, you, you see it. You see something nice in painting and you think, mm, I like that. Maybe I can add this and this and it'll all work together. And you got to try it out. Yes. I mean, you don't want to try it out forever because clearly it's not working. But <laughs> I think, I think as creative people, we will see something beautiful and think, oh, I have an idea. If I do this and this, that will incorporate that. And you try it. And then, you know, if it doesn't work after eight days, it might be time to wrap. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I'm going to just see if there's any questions here. Okay. Just, I hope I don't shut it off or anything while I'm um, <laughs> going through all these hellos. And you yeah, you know. I think I, I think that's one of the things in the last few years that I've really my biggest takeaway is I don't have that fear anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I did that one I had an, I had a the woman that I mentored with Jean Peterson prior to taking Nicholas's free workshop in CVP. She did I did an exercise like that with her one time where I painted and then she came back in. I was painting on this three by four and she came in and said, Well, can okay, now flip it upside down and paint all over it and I paint it again? I was like I kind of freaked out. So I did yeah. that a few times. She made me do that a few times. And you kind of lose that fear of preciousness. Um, but having said that, it's still always there. You're yeah. working on something. You, you start to like what you're doing. There's a part of it that you love. You get a little precious in one area. And then for some reason, the whole canvas, it just doesn't come together at the same time. Yeah. You have to work the entire. That's one of the biggest things I have learned in the last few years, and, and Nick will talk about that in the free workshop, the whole entire piece or whatever it is you're creating has to come together, has to grow at the same time, right? You, you have yeah. to work it equally because it all, otherwise something isn't gonna be right. Yeah, you know? yeah, There's yeah. I was working one last, I don't know, sometime last week or whatever, and um, I think I've got it on my, uh, in Instagram. It's a real, yeah, and and I, there's a couple, they're going, but they're not, because I like the design, and so then I'm finding that I just keep doing this, and when I find that I keep going around, then I have to actually um, sort of bust it up a bit. Yeah. Because I know what design structure is there that I like, but because I like it, I'm it's almost it's almost like this new thing that we bought it's the um it's called the bob and it's for vacuuming up your pet hair on the floor those oh yeah things. we got one this week and it just goes around you know in circles you know like that. if it hits the wall and then it goes back and forth and i'm like come on <laughs> there's a whole house to do here exactly. Get into the corner, and that's the same thing that happens sometimes to me while yeah. I'm working. Right? <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly it, right? Oh no, I know. You don't I want to be Bob, <laughs> Mr. Bob, artist. We love you, but they called it Bob. I didn't call it Bob. <laughs> I love that tool that you were using. It's the it's the acrylic with the wide. It's like a pen, but you you fill it. Do you do you fill it yourself with acrylic? Uh, paint and then it had yeah, the wide yeah. tip. 
Yeah, like I started using um, acrylic markers and I got a whole bunch and you got, you got to use them. If you don't use them, they dry up on you, people. If you got any, use them because yeah. they're nasty when they dry up and then you got to buy new, new nibs. But you can buy refillable ones or you can buy ones with the color. You can buy the empties on Amazon and then you can buy paint and, and put uh, fill it up. I actually bought one years ago that I tried to make paint to put in it. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing um, I did it a long time ago. I probably put water in, which isn't really the answer. Maybe uh, airbrush medium. It's got to be oh, something because yeah. the pigment, the pigment's got to be able to pass through, right? Yes. So I've been using them, but um, I bought them a few years ago, Nadine. And what I found was that it didn't give the mark that was my kind of mark so I had to keep playing with it until I could come up with the way I like to make my work yes is so important for all of us to do you yes I love I other, but you still at the end want to make sure you do you yeah I agree yeah I love that little marker that the it had the white paint in it and I thought that's because I have some acrylic markers that are just about at the end of their life and they're not refillable. Um, oh, you know, yeah. They, they would be refillable, but I don't think the tips, they're Liquitex. Okay. Uh, but they get so dry and jammed up, right? Yeah. But you so, can buy new tips. Yeah, maybe I could do that. You can buy new like, tips. I like to use them in my work sometimes. Like they just become part, another line or another way to make line in there, right? Or yeah. something. Right, so that's what I I'm use. still trying to invent a really large crayon. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing that works, and then we'll let everybody go. Okay, one thing that I did, and this only and this is not this is not a foolproof thing, okay? <laughs> but I had paint in containers like this is be this is so funny because I had this container that you know, when you put you store your little beads in when you yeah person well I had little blobs of paint this is before I got into abstract when you that's just enough for one swoosh but I had them in the bead container and they will dry out if you don't uh, keep it moist it doesn't dry out right away so if you can pull it out when it's rubbery that makes a fantastic crayon that's so smart I might have to try that. Yeah, I might have to try that too. But you've got to babysit it. Like you got to check it because what you're trying to do is make the you're trying to make the paint dry up. Yes. And then you got to use it before it gets too hard. So that's why I say it's not proof. <laughs> oh yeah, that you know what? That's cool. That might work. It's probably why I haven't actually made a whole bunch of crayons because you kind of you got to keep them at a certain place, right? It's like yeah. the yeah it's like the um anyway i can't remember the word um i just want to thank you i want to i want us to go before we're hitting an hour because yeah. i said half an hour and i've <laughs> taken up way more of your time and i so appreciate you joining me we should do this again absolutely i i love talking to you it's i can't believe it's almost an hour i'm happy to be here Amazing. um Great. and share with everyone um you know if you guys are even have a little inkling that something that you might want to do please don't hesitate it's not you'll never regret it it's yeah. such a fantastic opportunity and he's very his him and his team are so generous it's amazing so yeah and yeah. colleen anytime you want to have a chat you know I'm oh here. Awesome. i love how spontaneous you are because i'm a pretty spontaneous person so i yeah. love love that about you yeah. yeah so what nadine was talking about was the free art to life workshop link on her bio link on my bio and then, you know, if you've got some time and you're really going to go for it, there's the Creative Visionary program afterwards. And by the way, everybody, I will be having a chat with Nick Wilton on February the 19th. But I'll tell you more about that as we get closer to it, because I want to pick his brain, to find out what's so new yeah. about this year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait. I'll be there listening. Because okay. okay. it's all new to me too, and I'll, I'm and I'm taking. So for any of you that are thinking about it, I'll be there. I'll be there at the workshop, and I'll be there in CVP.
Yeah, we'll both be at the freebie. Um, yeah. Okay, well, Nadine, thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. For thanks, your thanks, everyone. Thanks, Pauline. You Have bet. a great weekend. Bye. Bye.